My name is Finn Danielson. I'm an ecologist from Nordic Foundation for Development and Ecology based in Copenhagen, Denmark. And I'm going to talk about a new University of the Arctic thematic network on collaborative resource management. My presentation is given in cooperation with Jason Akiraok from Nunavut Wildlife Management Board, Olivia Lee from University of Alaska Fairbanks, and Mark Noddle from University of Alberta. I'm going to talk about the aims and activities of this thematic network, why it is important, and the key outcomes. The objective of the thematic network is capacity development in collaborative management and community monitoring. And uh, we have set a target that within a number of years, training in co-management and monitoring will be incorporated into the curricula of the training institutions in the Arctic. Now, what do we mean with these terms? Well, by collaborative management, we mean that local stakeholders are playing a central role in the decision process about management of resources. By community monitoring, we mean that local stakeholders are leading and undertaking the monitoring. And by capacity development, well, that can be many different forms. Over the past two years, the key activities have been a seminar in Berlin, an experience exchange workshop in Hokkaido, and a training course in Nuuk. The founding partners of this thematic network is the Greenland Climate Research Center, Hokkaido University, University of Alaska Fairbanks, and the Nordic Foundation for Development and Ecology. The seminar in Berlin was held as a side event to the second Arctic Science Ministerial, and we discussed how in practice we can enhance the capacity of resource managers in the Arctic region in collaborative management and community-based monitoring. And we tried to inject the conclusions from the seminar into the science conference at the second Arctic Science Ministerial. At the workshop in Hokkaido, we discussed how can we plan and implement activities that can develop the capacity of resource managers in the Arctic in collaborative management and community-based monitoring. And this was the first time that all the the partners that have established the thematic network came together to meet each other physically and lay out a plan. In October 2019, we held an in-service course in Greenland for 25 government resource managers from all five municipalities of Greenland. We had uh, initially only planned for 10 trainees, but there was such a huge interest in it that we that we had to expand. Uh, and we had in the end, we had to say no, thank you to, to a number of people because there was simply not space for it. And this in-service course was co-funded by government of Denmark and the Intaros project of the EU. One of the ex things that we learned that people were particularly interested in in this course was uh, digital platforms for community-based monitoring in the Arctic. We had an exercise where, where the trainees, they looked at uh, the Greenland Ministry of Fisheries and Hunting's uh, community-based monitoring database and try to extract information on a number of different species. How, how is it going according to the view of the hunters and fishers and their, uh, from their observations? Uh, and uh, 
and what were what are their suggestions for what needs to be done, and what what and, and who should do these uh, management actions. People were particularly excited excited about uh, trying in practice to extract information from fishermen and hunters observations of uh, living resources in in Greenland. Why is this why is this important? Well, adapting to global species redistribution requires all hands on deck. We see today the largest change in the distribution of life on Earth caused by climatic changes for 25,000 years. Many species are moving further down, deeper into the sea, further up the mountains and towards the poles. And it requires that use of, both, of, of all hands, use of all observations available, scientists as well as community members. It re requires respect, collaboration, exchange and cross-weaving of indigenous industry, community-based and formal academic science. And it, it also requires decision-making at the most appropriate level. It requires that natural resource management uh, is undertaken that promotes local li livelihoods within sustainable limits. And uh, a couple of years ago, we did an evaluation of published uh, environmental monitoring programs and I'll briefly run over some of the key results because we looked at the time from data collection to decision making as well as the spatial scale of impact and who was supposed to take decisions based on the monitoring program and we've, we found that Scientists executed monitoring programs and participatory monitoring programs are very different from each other. Typically, scientists executing monitoring programs take you know, three to nine years from you start collecting data until the findings are ready for decision making. While participatory monitoring programs often takes less than a year. However, we also found that they inform decision makers at different levels. Scientists executed monitoring typically informs decision makers at national or even international level, whereas participatory monitoring typically informs decision makers at village level. So the key point here is that the scale of decision making and the implementation time differ. Without involvement of local people in monitoring may sometimes be isolated academic exercises with limited impacts in the real world. So the key outcome so far of this thematic network has been that we have started a dialogue uh, between public resource managers, scientists and community members about collaborative resource management and community-based monitoring. We welcome very much cooperation with other institutions and persons that are interested in this area in the Arctic. Thank you so much.